Hi folks! As a parent, you have a lot on your mind, and the last thing you want to worry about is exposing your baby to harmful chemicals in your own home. How can you avoid this? You'll be surprised to know that the culprit is none other than baby food. A recent study on commercial infant food products revealed that 95% of 168 baby foods it tested across 61 brands tested were found to contain detectable levels of toxic metals that can permanently affect infants' neurological development and behavior. So what are these toxins and how can you make sure that your kids don't ingest them? Stay tuned because we'll be answering these questions and more in today's video. What toxic chemicals are we talking about? The neurotoxins arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury occur naturally in all foods, but at least three of these chemicals were found in 40% of baby food samples tested, with 26% of products tested containing all four heavy metals. Also, lead was found in 94% of baby foods tested, cadmium in 75%, arsenic in 73%, and mercury in 32%. The study also included new data on the presence of the industrial chemical perchlorate in baby food, which adds to the IQ point loss posed by heavy metals. Perchlorate contamination was recorded in 19 of the 25 baby foods tested, including infant formula. The chemical, commonly used in food packaging, disrupts thyroid functions critical to brain development. Rice-based foods, such as infant rice cereals, rice dishes, and rice snacks, top the list for inorganic arsenic, which the study says accounts for 20% of the more than 11 million IQ points that children lose from birth to 24 months from all dietary sources. Why are children more at risk? Babies have lower immunity than adults, and most of their organs and senses are at a growing stage, which makes them more vulnerable to these toxins. Babies breathe more often and more deeply. They also consume more food and water per pound than adults, increasing their exposure risk to toxic chemicals in the environment. They also crawl on the floor and put so many things in their mouths, exposing them to more unwanted chemicals than adults. Why are these chemicals bad for your babies and kids? Even in the trace amounts found in food, toxic metals can erode your child's IQ, cause developmental and behavioral problems, and impact their kidneys and liver. Young children, especially babies, are at highest risk because their brains and organs aren't fully developed, their intestinal absorption of toxic elements is higher, and their food intake to body weight is greater. Toxic chemicals in babies and children can also lead to type 2 diabetes, heart disease, certain cancers, and reproductive problems later in life. Which foods are the most toxic? You have to keep in mind that some foods have been found to be riskier than others. Products made with rice, particularly cereals, are the top sources of heavy metals, especially inorganic arsenic. Four of the seven rice cereals tested had arsenic levels above the proposed Food and Drug Administration limit of 100 parts per billion. It also included rice dishes and rice-based snacks. The other foods are Cheerios and Oat Ring cereal, macaroni and cheese, puff snacks, and teething biscuits, soft cereal bars, oatmeal cookies, fruit yogurt, and sweet potato baby food. The list also contains drinks like apple juice, grape juice, and 100% fruit juice blend. Why are heavy metals present in baby food? Heavy metals are found in soil and water, and crops absorb them as they grow. Some plants are more prone to absorption than others. Rice, for example, absorbs 10 times more arsenic than other grains. While the FDA has proposed draft guidelines for baby cereals and fruit juices, it has not yet finalized them, despite saying that it would do so by the end of 2018. Although arsenic levels in rice cereal and fruit juice have declined 36% and 75% during the past 10 years due to the FDA's draft guidance. Government Action Needed the government needs to take additional steps like setting a goal of no detectable metals of these heavy metals in baby and children's food and setting incremental targets for industry to meet along the way. 
It should also finalize its limit for 100 ppb for inorganic arsenic in infant rice cereal and should lower the limit for lead in juice from 50 ppb to 5 ppb. What action can you take as a parent? Number 1. Give your child a variety of food. One of the reasons exposures adds up dangerously for infants is the lack of variety in their diet. Take four to six month olds for example. Many parents still follow old, outdated guidelines on the best first foods or believe they need to introduce one food at a time, waiting a few days to see if an allergy will occur. But there's no recommendations anymore on what you have to start with. You don't have to wait days in between introducing new foods. You don't have to hold off on any allergenic food unless there's an existing allergy in the family. Latest guidelines suggest that you should feed your baby a variety of healthy foods, including all of the allergenic foods early and often in a consistency the baby can manage. You don't have to avoid anything other than raw honey, milk, or choking hazards. Milk is not advised as a drink for infants because it cannot be metabolized until around the age of one, but it's fine as an addition to mashed potatoes or other foods during the first year. After age one, milk and water are the go-to drinks for children. Adding variety at the beginning will also help children be less picky in their food selections as they grow. That's good news considering kitty staples such as macaroni and cheese showed up in the list of most neurotoxic foods. Number two, reduce rice. As we told you before, rice and its products are considered to contain the most toxic chemicals amongst baby food. These include rice cereal, rice-based puffs, rice-based snacks, and rice rusks for teething biscuits. Instead of rice, try to feed whole grains with more nutrition to your baby. Choose oatmeal and other whole grain cereals, but not plain except for the first day or so. You can also add almond butter and peanut butter to the oatmeal for extra nutrition. You don't have to do cereal as a first food at all. You could also do avocado and vegetables and then go straight to salmon and chicken and even meat, beans, or lentils as long as you puree it. Number three, choose snacks carefully. Rice teething rusks and other teething biscuits are more like snacks that have no nutrition and are not a good choice to soothe a baby's pain. It's essentially like giving your baby a cookie. A cold piece of melon, a frozen banana, or a peeled cucumber are better choices if you watch closely for choking. You may go for a teething ring or soft wet cloth as well, again, with watching for choking. That will reduce levels of arsenic as well as lead and cadmium that has been found in those teething foods. There are also better choices for toddler snacks than rice puffs or even the ubiquitous round cereal so frequently given as finger food which also showed up on the neurotoxic list. Snacks like apples and bananas, cheese, grapes, peaches and yogurt are great replacements. Number 4. Avoid juice. Apple, grape and other juices are a significant source of heavy metals for children, not because the levels are as high as rice products but because children drink so much juice. When you do the math, juices can sometimes be way worse than rice. In fact, 80% of families serve juice to their toddlers, and three quarters of those serve it daily. By replacing juice with tap water, you can reduce your child's exposure to toxic metals by about 68%. But don't go with bottled water, as it's no safer than filtered tap water and generates plastic waste that's easily avoided if you choose tap water. Even 100% fruit juice offers no nutritional benefits over whole fruit. That's because the natural sugars in juice contribute to weight gain and dental decay as much as other sugars. While juice does contain some vitamins and a bit of calcium, the overall lack of protein and fiber make it a poor choice for a healthy drink for babies and kids. Babies under six months only need breast milk and formula. As for juice, it's best to avoid juice for children under one. The drink of choice for a child's second year of life should be water and whole milk, although a small amount of juice is fine, but make sure it's 100% fruit juice to avoid added sugar. Better yet, serve small pieces of real fruit, which are even healthier. Number five, prepare foods carefully. Carrots and sweet potatoes are on the list of foods most contaminated. By replacing those with a variety of vegetables, you can reduce your baby's risk by 73%. 
But instead of eliminating carrots and sweet potatoes, which are excellent sources of key vitamins and minerals, you should serve them less frequently to your child and take extra care to peel them carefully. Peeling definitely helps, and if you peel even a little more deeply, you can remove even more of the heavy metals. When cooking rice for the entire family, add extra water, just as you would for pasta, then pour it off before serving. This can reduce arsenic levels by up to 60%. Do you feed your baby any of the foods on this list? What's your go-to baby food snack? Let us know in the comments section below. Enjoyed this video? Hit like, share, and subscribe to Bestie. Wait, what kind of Bestie are we if we don't tell you about our other awesome videos? Go ahead, choose the left or right video and enjoy.